Welcome to Bull TV, where we are bullish on Collierville and the Mid-South. Bull TV is hosted by David Pickler. Bull TV is a monthly show that empowers, educates, and entertains while highlighting the people who inspire and deliver solutions for a stronger community. Bull TV is presented by Pickler Companies and is proudly produced by the students of Collierville High School. We invite you to watch our show at www.bulltv.show, thebullnetwork.com, and chstv19. New episodes air on the second Sunday of every month at 3 p.m. Central Time. On today's show, I sit down with Marie Pisano, president of MVP3 Foundation. Join us as we discuss Marie's journey to becoming a dynamic force in the entertainment industry. We'll dive into her diverse roles as a filmmaker, producer, and author, as well as her commitment to empowering the community through the arts. Don't miss this inspiring conversation with Marie, a true visionary dedicated to making a difference in the world. Today, I'm joined by Marie Pisano. As president of MVP3 Foundation and a pioneering figure in the entertainment industry, Marie Pisano has made significant strides in film, music, television, and philanthropy. Her journey embraces the essence of conquering challenges to live with passion and purpose, driving the, quote, find your yes with mind, body, and soul, unquote, campaign to inspire and empower Marie's impact in the film sector includes producing and co-writing various screenplays with collaborations on historical, mainstream, and faith-based films. Marie co-produced several local television shows before creating Girls Night Out with award-winning director Stephen Boyle. In 2012, she became executive producer of the multi-award-winning documentary Momo, The Sam Giancano Story. She's currently in development on a documentary, A Society in Crisis, a family in divide, working with legislators to pass mandated laws to help children and families. Marie is the author of the book, From Barefoot to, S to Stilettos, It's Not for Sissies, that has inspired the movie screenplay and was also produced into an audiobook. Her new adventure, 12 Steps to Finding Your Yes, is set to be released in spring 2024. A dedicated advocate for change, Marie has been involved with legislative efforts, including a new mission to spearhead Esther Law in honor of her mother's work helping children. She's working to redefine the way divorces are handled and reduce the trauma and adverse childhood experiences on children. Marie's biggest job and joy is being the mom, the proud mom, I should say, of two who are now young adults. She hopes to set the example for her children to continue her mother's legacy of helping other children and families. Wow, that is quite a, quite a, 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 a bio there. That's amazing, Marie. Well, thank you. It's uh, 20, over 20 years in the making. My goodness. Well, we are so proud to have you all here on Bull thank TV. Uh, this is such an opportunity for us to be able to come and talk to a, a truly uh, decorated, acknowledged, wonderful filmmaker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, now, one of the things we always do in our show is we begin with, uh, with really a simple question, but a very meaningful question, and that is a kind of a way for us to get to know a little bit about you. So in three words, who is Marie Pisano? Well, first I would say film, music, community, but most importantly, I am a mom. You know, family does come first no matter what. Uh, a big heart, but one not to be reckoned with. Oh, hey. <laughs> Very interesting. So, Marie, what really initially inspired you to get into the entertainment industry? And, and how did you get your start? Well, when I was younger, my mother would put together these fundraising um, events, um, talent shows, um, my her interest was music and she was an artist mm -hmm. so 
w- grew up watching the Sonny and Cher, sh- you know, Sonny and Cher show, <laughs> 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 and just watching movies. And I think it was just her that inspired me, you know, and my dad, who was very creative as well. He's an engineer, but mm-hmm. more scientific, but combined with all of it, it was just my interest. And from there, you know, just grew. That's fantastic. Yeah, I don't often hear people refer to as creative engineers. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's quite a blending of both the left and right brain there. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like you had a very interesting childhood. Very much so. So we had to learn how to change a tire and then learn how to do laundry as well. You know? Okay. <laughs> These are important life lessons. Yes. <laughs> so remember that, kids. <laughs> well, now, Marie, as a producer and, and a writer, how do you approach creating content that's both engaging and meaningful? How do I? Or, yeah. you so, know, or, or look, tell me a little bit about, about your process of how you really use some of those creative energies you have to really create engaging and, again, so meaningful content that what you've well, done. Well, it's stuff that inspires me, really. You know, projects will come to me, um, but it for me, what hits me that will get me to engage is if it has something that has a message okay. or if something in the storyline that we can do that gives back where that falls into film music community. Um, what we do within our films is if something relates to the storyline, like I'll give you an example, the movie shattered that we did. Mm-hmm. Um, Morgan Freeman's son plays um, a mental health expert in the film. So we partnered that. You'll hear him say NAMI, Tennessee, which is the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Mm -hmm. So that's how we, you know, relate those things. So if it has something like that that gives back, um, has a certain message, I like thought-provoking. I like faith-based. I like, you know, integrity media is what I call it. Yeah. So so clearly it's really all about... Stories that, that, that have a meaning, mm-hmm. messages that you're trying to deliver, and to really, do you consider yourself to be a change agent with, through your films? I, I'd like to be known as that, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, you know, you, you just mentioned the, the movie Shattered, mm-hmm. and uh, and that was, I believe, your, your debut as, yes. a, as a, a producer for a future film, uh, and it's seen... Uh, really quite a bit of success in a number of different distribution mediums. Uh, what did this project teach you about both filmmaking and also about yourself? Well, it, that was a hard lesson. Um, I can't dive too much into that, but the film is no longer owned by me. Oh. But it is out there. My name is on it. I produced it and very proud of it. But in this industry, what you'll find is um, I used to, they used to joke with me in LA, um, a lot of producers and everything said, Marie, you're not a producer unless you go through some legal, okay. <laughs> legal matters. And, um, you had to have that street, street cred, yes, right? Yes. Yes. You know, and, uh, I'll tell you, I have that credibility. Let me tell you. Um, but it is learning the legal aspect, the business aspect to it. And, you know, I don't think anything really is a mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, meaning you learn, you know, if I didn't, how can I say this, you know, carefully, if I didn't, um, I wasn't put through a ringer, Mm -hmm. how would I understand, you know, the industry? How would I have that experience? Um, this put me with legal experience it has put me with production experience, um, things that could go wrong on a set. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was definitely you know um, a challenge, but something that came out really good. And when we did that film, it went off like a hitch. It was wow. really good. Yeah, well, I'm so, still so, proud so, of it, though. Well, it sounds like again. It, this this journey has been such a journey of, of growth and and of yeah. and of building these experiences and learning from mistakes and learning from hardships. Yes. 
Yep. And, and that in and of itself is, is a great story, right? <laughs> it's, the, it's the Marie story. That's why I call it From Barefoot to Stilettos. It's not for sissies. Wow, that's great. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I, I think is so important about the work that you do is that you really manage to bring very important societal issues out to the forefront. And I think when I, when I think of, of filmmaking, you know, that, that I really think about it, you're telling a story. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get a message out there. And that's what you're doing through your, your documentaries. What drives your passion for the topics that you choose? Well, for example, like the Walter Bailey right now is a story that we're doing, the Walter Bailey story, the man, the icon, the law. Mm -hmm. And he's a civil rights icon here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his story is an an incredible journey. I mean, it is something that not only for our black history, but also just for legal, for Mm -hmm. um, many different leaps that he has overcome and what he has done for the city. All these stories here in the Memphis area are incredible that many don't know out in the rest of the world that here I feel like, you know, uh, like I'm in a candy store. I have all these stories here, and we got to go tell them. Mm -hmm. So all I'm missing is the money. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting that you talk about Walter Bailey. uh, In a previous life, when when I was chairman of the Shelby County Board of Education, uh, Walter was one of our county commissioners. And uh, we didn't always agree on every issue. (laughs) In fact, we may have disagreed far more than we agreed. Uh, but uh, but there was always a profound respect, and uh, and and there are a few people that I I refer to in a, in a very positive manner as a liberal lion, mm-hmm. and uh, and Walter Bailey was every and is every bit that uh, a, a man who you knew what he stood for, mm-hmm. and uh, and he was a powerful advocate uh, for those beliefs, and uh, and we need people like that. We need people who mm-hmm. are truly statesmanlike. And, and powerful advocates and powerful storytellers. Mm-hmm. So that, that's important. Now, we talk about all the, the issues that you've dealt with, and one of the topics that was come across this show many, many times has been the impact of, of COVID, of the pandemic. And and due to the pandemic, you you had to make some tough talk choices. Yes. You actually had to, had to close down MVP3 Entertainment Group. Um, Talk to me a little bit about how you were able to navigate through this incredibly challenging period for your business. You have to, when you are hit with something like that, you have to have your mind, body, and soul in balance, let me tell you. But from that, with we, Mr. Lightman of Lightman, um, Melco Theaters mm-hmm. and Lightman Properties, um, he knew what I, I had, um, you know, the projects and everything we could bring to the city and he partnered, you know, me with a gentleman that was the investor. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, with the COVID and everything else, the funding did not come through. But we were able, like you said, to open it. It was successful when it opened, so I know it was possible. Mm-hmm. But when COVID happened and then all the legal matters that come from that, um, it, I was left by myself to handle it all. An 80,000 square foot building, 20 Mm. acres, hotel partners, vendors. Mm. Um, I never thought I would, you know, most people that I understand usually have major panic attacks and, but I was able to handle it with grace, by grace of God. Um, And during that time as well, someone broke into the building. Oh, no. I didn't even know there was such a thing that people take copper out of buildings. Oh, but yes. when, remember when there was a big storm and the city shut down for about a week or so? Sure. Um, so that created other issues because that was still under, you know, my watch, basically. But the city did help me. Police officers, um, wonderful. Um, we, you know, manned that building and... Mr. Lightman was able to sell it. We had to foreclose, but uh, a school took it over, and I actually helped the school write the um, student film and TV program. Very good. Yeah, so from that, I think, I mean, there were, I mean, to be honest, there were people that were upset, and for me, um, I'm really built on truth and integrity, and even though it was out of my control, I 
still went back to the vendors and, you know, what can I do to heal this, Mm -hmm. you know, but um, financially and everything, I wasn't capable to do that, but I found ways, you know, to correct it. And I think I, I gained a lot of respect. I got a lot of uh, letters of recommendation from that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a couple of major business leaders here just said to me, Marie, there are times that they went bankrupt. There are times, and, you know, here we have FedEx, mm-hmm. and here we have other people that have, you know, major companies and our state reps, you know, and they've been through it. And they just, they kind of took me under the, you know, their wing and just said, it's not a, not a failure. You learn something. That's exactly right. And, mm-hmm. you know, we always say life is a marathon, not yeah. a sprint. And, uh, yeah, I know great story of Sam Walton the founder of Walmart. Yeah. Uh, I think he was running a Ben Franklin five and dine store and was, was run out of business uh, <laughs> by a bigger company. And, uh, you know, I think Churchill also said that, you know, uh, that, that failure is never fatal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, but you just got to keep working hard. Yeah. So you've had so many lessons that you've had to learn. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and when people think of, of you as a filmmaker, then I always think about all of the other things that are involved. Yeah. As you say, you know, working with the lawyers, working with the accountants, right. working with investors, uh, and, and not even, you know, long before you ever get to a soundstage and yeah. the actual filming of all the business of it. So what what do you think has been the the most significant lesson that you've learned from all of these hardships? Oh, you know, my perseverance, my strength, my power, um, but most of all a healing and Mm -hmm. a forgiveness. And if you don't have that, I don't think you're going to make it through business or anything. No, I totally agree. Yeah. You know, you, you've, you've been involved in a number of things, and, and certainly music production is nothing that that, that, that you've had a significant mm-hmm. role in. And, and and when I think about some of the roles you've had, it's been quite a diverse background. <laughs> My goodness gracious, you've uh, you've had mentorship by people like Kenny Loggins mm-hmm. and uh, Pam Lewis, who I think it was Garth Brooks' former mm-hmm. manager. And uh, so when you start, you know, we, we talk about filmmaking, now we're talking about music production. So. Okay, Marie, how'd you get involved in this now? Well, actually, the music industry was the first thing that I got involved with. When okay. I came here in 1999, kicking and screaming, by the way, um, I dove into c- community. I was on many boards that help women and children. And at the time, one of my friends, her unfortunately, her daughter had um, cancer, childhood mm-hmm. cancer, and a patient of St. Jude. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I spearheaded something called Rock for Hope for Mm -hmm. St. Jude at the New Daisy. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, um, we put it together and me coming from, you know, the Motown to Janis Joplin, all that, my mom, you know, the Beatles, all that. I kind of wanted a Woodstock type of, you know, concert, all different genres on one stage at the New Daisy. And it so happened that one of my girlfriends um, from you know, T, you know, the news, um, she's never been to Nashville. So we ended up going there Mm -hmm. and happened to be at a Brett Michaels concert, poison concert. Sure. So after the concert, they had an after party and here is me and my friend and we meet Billy Falcon and Billy Falcon writes with Bon Jovi, Mm -hmm. by the way. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So all the, you know, I'm watching the Maltz brothers up on stage. Here comes Brett. We talked to Brett and, you know, introduced us to the Maltz brothers. And from there I said, you know what? I don't have a country rock band. Why don't you come to Memphis? And when they came here, we, I did everything. I put the concert together, whatever. And at the end of the day, they're like, Marie, we need a manager. We've never seen anybody like you. You you pull through everything. And I'm like, I don't know if you guys are on something, you know, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> meaning like, I, how can I be a manager? You know, I was used to being on, you know, boards for women and children. I come from the financial industry, by the way. And so I went back and forth for a while. That's when I met Pam Lewis, mm-hmm. like you mentioned. And she's just like, don't let them sleep on your couch. Don't let, you know, musician, all the, all the roles. But I learned the music industry. And when I, you know, all, like every musician, they want their songs and movies. Sure. So 
we ended up getting them signed. I got them signed. And how they hooked me was basically, Marie, no women do this. And I was like, what do you mean? I could be the first woman that could, you know, but, um, but Pam Lewis, you know, she told me what she had to go through mm -hmm. and going back and forth to Nashville, it was really interesting. I, bet. I, um, you know, coming back here, seeing how the music industry worked and, um, back there and then hearing the stories again, the stories, which intrigued me, um, I met Bobby Blue Bland, um, B.B. King. Mm -hmm. I met Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, we had icons here. And when I started to learn their background, um, you know, most artists don't know, own themselves. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing. And when I met Isaac Hayes, um, that was a big wake-up call because he, you know, explained a lot to me. And when I met Al Bell, you mm -hmm. know, Al Bell sure. from Stax, the legendary Stax. Well, one day I was at, it was the Memphis Music Foundation, mm -hmm. and he just became chairman. <clears throat> and I just remember at that meeting, we had all these businessmen, everybody in the industry, and here's me like a little kid in the front row and Al Bell is explaining, I didn't really know the history of Stacks mm -hmm. at the time. But Al goes, does anyone have any questions? I rose my hand like a five-year-old, you know, like, yes. <laughs> you know, he goes, yes. And I, he goes, um, what, what can I do for you? And I go, how do I get a meeting with you? <laughs> and he goes, and who are you? And I said, my name is Marie Pisano, and I have MVP. <laughs> you know, and he goes, I want to talk to you, you know, and he said to Dean Dale at the time, get, get us a meeting room right after this two hours awesome. after that. And from there we became really good friends and I learned a lot from that man. And so learning a lot about Memphis music and then watching the, you know, in Nashville, they got it all going on. They're like competitive, mm -hmm. but they all work together sure. and they made a music business. And, you know, a lot of people get mad at me here for saying this, but I just speak truth mm -hmm. because you got to make sense to this. Certainly. We are just a scene, really. Mm -hmm. we, we are. I mean, Nashville is killing it with music. Mm -hmm. They work together. Hollywood, they might be blowing themselves up right now, but they all, MGM, in association with Lionsgate, you know, mm -hmm. so on, they all work together. But here we just have silos, and hardly anybody comes together. And, Huge issue. Yes. Huge issue. You yes. know, and there's so many messages about what you just said. Uh, the first one is, I think maybe the most important one, is you asked the question. You made the ask. Yeah. And you think about so many people in life that they say, I wish I should have done this, right? I should have raised my hand or I should have, have asked for that meeting. But you did that. Yes. And uh, and the second thing is I think the recognition that you have. Uh, and it's not just about Memphis. There's so many places in this world where people try to, to, to lock themselves in these silos. Yeah. And, and, and they can be physical silos and they can be emotional. They can be, they can, they can be intellectual silos. Yeah. And they don't open themselves up to what is possible. And, uh, and when you can collaborate and, 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 and bring together, then there's a, you can still compete. Yes. But, uh, but, but you make the pie larger and more successful and amazing. So, you know what I say? It's you got sticks, I got a match, together we go make a fire. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> well, let's talk about your book. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first of all, I love the title. <laughs> I mean, From Barefoot to Stilettos is not for sissies. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So I, I know that that's inspired many people who've read that. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your writing process. What was it like? And how did it feel to see your life story in print? You know, and I'm taking this from someone who literally, I, I just yeah. published a book, and it took about four years to write, and yeah. I know how painful that was. Yes. So, so tell me about your process. It's pretty much the same, I'd say. Um, I, when I went through everything at the time, um, trying to build my entertainment powerhouse is what I called it. I got punches left and right, let mm -hmm. me tell you, because not only in this industry, people crawl to get to the top and everything, <laughs> but um, you just have all these naysayers and everybody that comes at you. And being a woman, I'm just going to have to say it, being a woman in a man's world and at the time, this we're going back 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and um, 
everywhere, it was always, no matter what I did, it was always some gossip, some rumor, whatever. And, you know, when I went through a divorce, I was like, I didn't have a voice. Mm. I was tired of everybody telling my story. So I woke up one morning and the title from Barefoot to Stilettos came in my head. And I'm like, it's not for sissies. We all come in this <laughs> world barefoot. Mm -hmm. We all stumble and fall. But at the end of the day, you know, we each have a power to rise tall and mm -hmm. go find our yes. So I did write a second book. Oh. Um, it's a sequel called From Barefoot to Stilettos, Finding Your Yes. And luckily for me, I mean, I just had a blessing. Morgan Freeman endorsed, you know, my first book. Okay. Um, Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul. You want to talk about the ask? Mm -hmm. He's got the book. He calls me the greatest asker. He, that, <laughs> yes, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> but um, but writing that book was very healing. It, you know, how truth shall set you free. Absolutely. It was my side, my story, but most of all, my forgiveness. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, so your book is clearly it's not only been a great source of inspiration, but it's also been a stepping stone for you into so many other mm -hmm. mediums. So. How has storytelling across so many different platforms really enriched your creative expression? It's a, it's a, a healing outlet, you know, it is. Um, but it has, again, you when you do a movie anyway, you got to mm -hmm. start with a story. Sure. And Morgan Freeman always said, go buy a book. You know, go the best way to start from a book to the screenplay to the screen, you know. And so... When, you know, I just, I remember at the time when I was writing my book, it was very scary, but mm -hmm. I let my parents read it. Everybody was like, go ahead. But that cover of the book was, it was almost like coming out in this world naked, you know, okay. and yeah. literally like. I think most of us do. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> yes, but um, it was very scary to come out and tell my truth, but the whole process of, you know, from writing a book to, you know, the idea. And then when you write the book, it's like, well, this could be a TV show. This could be, you know, a movie. And when people found out that I wrote my book, mm -hmm. I had um, people in this industry approach me about a TV series. Mm -hmm. And then I, I turned a corner and there was Ron Friends and Keith Williams and David... Ashcroft, um, Ulansky, and um, Bill Halyar, all from Marvel Comic DC illustrators, right. all freelance. And we came up with Stiletto, the Powerhouse Baroness comic book. <laughs> and so that that's just how things, you know, just... That is great. Yeah. Okay, I have to ask the question, mm -hmm. though. And because you talked about when you're growing up, enjoying watching Sonny and Cher, yes. and you do, you do bear a little. I see a little Cher thing here. Uh, if so, I could turn but, back but, time, no. but but, uh, but if you could could yeah. take the actress that would play you in your in in the TV series, who would that be? Oh my! Um, well, she would have to be a little Latin Italian. Uh, uh, you know. The first person, well, for Stiletto that came up was Daisy Fuentes. Okay. You know, um, she's, you know, something. But there was many people. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers Desperate Housewives. Oh, but, my goodness. Of course. Um, Ava Longoria sure. was one. Um, who else came up? There was, uh, what's her name? She was on the Fantastic Four. Oh, yes, um, you're talking Jessica, Jessica Alba. Alba. Yes, but they've already Two very kinda, beautiful ladies. They, <laughs> and, and, and they're almost as pretty as you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, so let's talk about your newest venture, mm -hmm. uh, and it's related to that Barefoot to Slow series. And so tell me about, uh, I bet this series is about to be released. Is okay. that, is that, the, is that series, the Marvel thing? No, the 12 Steps to Finding Your Yes. Okay. Now, that is a workbook. It goes with the series. Okay. And it's really simple, basic steps. But it was... When I just recently got out of all of this craziness with legal, divorce, all of it, lost my house. Oh, goodness. Car repossessed. Lost the company, you know, practically. So I had to build, take mm -hmm. those steps right back up. And 
So what I did was I had to find, I had to grieve losing that studio. Mm -hmm. I had to grieve many things. And so I started writing, okay, I got to, I got to do something every day was writing my journal. Um, what can I do? Five things today that I can get back up. How, you know, and when everybody got hit by the pandemic and all mm -hmm. that, um, a lot of jobs were lost. Mm -hmm. So it was basically figuring out, finding my resources and everything. And what did I do to get, you know, myself back up again? And here I am again and um, finding my yes. So I wanted to share that with everybody else. And again, it might be repetitive when people read it, but right. sometimes it's a programming. We wow. tell ourselves constantly that we're not good enough or just because something happened or we, you know, you lose a company or divorce or something, somebody said no, you think that's the dead end, but it's not. Well, see, that is so important because, you know, Everybody's always, again, they're afraid of failure. Yeah. But uh, but what you're showing is how you can learn from that and how, again, you just keep moving forward, yep. keep picking yourself up. So uh, so tell me a little bit more about, you know, the, the finding your yes with Mind, Body, and Soul campaign. What is, you know, tell me some of the elements of now that. Now that, when we did, when I did my second book or prior to my second book, mm -hmm. um, we did the documentary Finding My Yes with Mind, Body, and Soul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I had panic attacks when I was younger. I didn't realize 20 years later that it's like a post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. I was on a motorcycle accident. Oh. And what you'll see on the first book, the cover, um, you know, I have a scar of a T and Morgan Freeman calls it T for tough. Um, <laughs> but my, my journey, I wanted to show people because I had panic attacks mm -hmm. and I had um, just different you know, people had all these questions, you know, from your 20s, the 30s, 40s. So I got all the top medical doctors here, religious leaders, mental health experts, and we put a documentary starring Jack Canfield, oh, my mentor in there. And so from that, it then I started thinking, well, I had all these questions, you know, with, you know, health and everything, too. Luckily, we did this right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So all the doctors in there, there we go. you want to watch it because they're telling they were free to speak. They were, you know, so they are telling everybody um, how to find your yes with mind, body and soul. So we're bringing it back. Good. I want to heal community um, because, again, if you don't have your mind, body and soul in balance, I don't know how you're going to get through this world. No, yeah. you're totally right. Yeah. Now, you mentioned this a couple of minutes ago, but but it's such a cool thing. that i, I got to go a little bit deeper into this whole thing about stiletto. <laughs> the, I, I love this. Stiletto, the powerhouse yes. baroness. <laughs> uh, and, and so, uh, and again, you know, Ron French, Marvel Cut Comics, uh, developed that for you, and now it's in development as a full Full, full, feature, full feature action film? Well, yep. We got the screenplay done. Um, she is a comic strip right now in La Prensa Latina magazine, the largest bilingual magazine in the Mid-South. So she's got a comic strip. We're going to release her this year. And it, I should say, Ron Friends actually created, or he's, if you look him up, Spider-Man, mm -hmm. Thor, um, Spider-Girl, um, Spider-Woman, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of these uh, um, fans of the comic world will wow. kind of be proud of this because we're going to bring them here. So how does yeah. it feel to be a superhero? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't look at it that way, but I mean, she is kind of like my alter ego, but... Um, She's your avatar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, you know, the funny thing is I didn't look at it that way. I just looked at here we have a story, even though it's about me, I take it out of me, in, so to speak. And she's a big supporter of the children of the fallen patriots. And mm -hmm. again, I'm all about film music community. Sure. How can we do something with her that is going to create a change? And um, the children of the fallen patriots, you know, when, you, when there are parents that um, in service, kids that lost their kid, um, yeah. parents, they give 100% college tuition. So we we thought about that for the comic book, and then it turned into, of course, it's got to be a movie, you know? And so Tom Malloy, um, Trick Handle Productions, uh, 
Glass House out of um, New York. Um, he's making lots of films in Hollywood. He's on board to create this superhero. Um, All right, Jessica Alba, here's another, another <laughs> role for you, girl. <laughs> I love so, it. But um, I think it would be kind of cool. That's why I want to bring all these productions here. Right. You know, even though, you know, it's about me, but it's everybody that I'm connected to. Um, it's about helping them, too. So, like, all the movies that we have mm -hmm. under our slate, mm -hmm. you know, you're, who knows, your book could be a movie or who a documentary. Knows, you never yeah. <laughs> well, you've had such a diverse career, and you've gone so many different directions. You've had, quite frankly, quite a few turns and maybe a couple of dead ends. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been a point that you consider to be a, a turn, either a turning point or maybe a breakthrough moment that, that you really look back in, in your career? I've had a couple breakthroughs um, recently, which I feel really good about. Um, all my investors were very grace, graceful. Um, they, they believed in me. They knew what I had to go through. I cleared everything out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Had to dissolve things. And now um, I took a little bit of my own money. Mm -hmm. And here I am again. I opened up. MVP3 Records, MVP3 Media Group, and MVP3 Network. I have my own streaming network now. Okay. With the uh, former president Tyler Perry Studios and Indavo Media out of Atlanta, we built our own streaming service to give opportunity here for future filmmakers that cannot get on Netflix and Amazon. And we have pay-per-view. We have all of that. And to create an opportunity for students to actually have jobs with MVP3. Well, you know what? I happen to know where there are a you know, couple of dozen <laughs> amazing you, you know, students involved in, in filmmaking and television. Yes. And so and this is why you guys got to talk to guys. Well, so. just looking at all this right now and what we have here, we're sitting on a gold mine of talent. Incredible. And this is why I want to bring everybody to, together and um, you know, people are paying attention to MVP3 Foundation partnering. We got Governor Lee, um, the, we got the state of Tennessee blessing of having the best interest of the state. And um, we're getting grants, which is wonderful, and putting on all these different programs for um, not only financial literacy, because a lot of the artists and all that need to know finance and business, but student film TV programs, um, working with vets, working with a farmer's market, wow. a lot of different things. So it's all about healing community through the arts. Well, and, and put a perfect uh, lead in, because that really is my next question, is through MVP3 Foundation, you know, how do you envision, what are some of the things you see happening to use the arts to really help heal communities? Well, one of them is the film and TV, you know, program that we have using students on our productions to create jobs okay. with the film school in Nashville that we're bringing here. And when you said there was, you know, the thing about the breakthrough, mm -hmm. I lost one building. Now I have four. Oh, goodness. And there's four that somebody gave me to use and figure out to go get the funding and all that for. And when we do that. Um, it'll be an opportunity to put the film school, put our television network, and also a cafe. And the cafe goes with the Finding Your Yes with Mind, Body, and Soul, healthy go. eating, agriculture, all of that, and a uh, you know, farmer's market, and giving jobs to vets, women in need. And I'm all about empowering, you know, as well through the arts. So you know, the music, we have three songs that we released with the foundation, mm -hmm. Simple Song of Freedom. It's an old Bobby Darren song mm -hmm. coming together. It was a miracle. I, we got this project that all these, um, Larry Dobson from the Bar Barcase, Carla Thomas from Stax, the Stax Academy kids, um, Keith um, Norman's choir and the coasters, um, you name it, they all came together. It's called the Memphis Freedom Band and Priscilla Presley. She I is saw you featured, a picture with Priscilla here recently. Um, she is part of this project. Mario Monteroso you know, was inspired by him, and we um, put it on the record label and through the foundation, and it gives back to healing babies all over the world as oh, well. So gosh. it's incorporating 
not only, you know, the profit side, but also the nonprofit and how we give back. I'm just wondering, is there a place in your home, your office, where you've got like a shelf full of hats? Because you're wearing so many different hats <laughs> all, all at the same time. <laughs> but they all go together. It's like the trifecta. You need the film, you need the music, and you need community. So to give back somehow, and right. it just works. But again, this is 20 years in the making, a lot of partnerships, so I'm not only doing this by myself. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and this may be a hard question for you, because you've been in contact with so many amazing people, but who has been the, the greatest inspiration in your life? Richard Sander. Okay. Why, why that? Richard Sander, I worked with him when before moving here. Mm -hmm. um, he took a chance on me. Um, he's been on the cover, I believe, twice of Time Magazine, um, Father of Futures, and also the um, most influential, influential person of finance. And he took me under his wing when I was working in the industry, and um, he just inspired me. And his, he's a visionary. He mm -hmm. sold one company for over $600 million. I mean, people like Fred Smith and Richard Sander, another person is Fred Smith. I, when I wanted, when I say something, I got to be careful because it might happen, you know. And <laughs> I did get a meeting with Fred Smith one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You would think I would have been intimidated. I came in there and I argued with him and I told him exactly <laughs> what I was going to do. And, you know, and he was like, I can't even do that, Marie. And I like, watch, you know. And <laughs> so ever since then, people like them. Um, but my mom, really, to be honest, my mom, my grandfather, my grandmother, my dad, those are the core, you no know, push. but people like that out in the world. And, you know. Even though I like to empower women and mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, there are so many men, it's all men that help lift me, you know, and, you know, it, it's amazing the men that can't, you know, women have to realize that there are some pretty incredible men. And David, I have to give you kudos as well, because you came to my side well. and, you know, you've sponsored things and, uh, um, you know. Everybody from Mr. Lightman, Pat Halloran, oh, you know, Duncan man. Williams, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, going back to um, before I met you and before, right before Morgan Freeman, a bad wealth manager came and, and Oops. yep, luckily I picked, again, the ask, I picked up the phone, I saw this sign called Duncan Williams. I don't know how I got to his voicemail. I said, Duncan, I'm Marie Pisano. And, da, da, da. and he <laughs> called me the next day. He said, get in here. Because if I can't help you, we're going to find someone that can. And he helped me with my first business plan. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, you just talked about your mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm really interested in this creation of, of Esther's Law. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. Esther's Law came about because not only because I went through the divorce system, mm -hmm. but... Oh my goodness, this family and court, um, family law and the family court system, it is broken. Mm -hmm. And we all know this. And working with Judge Sugarman and lots of legislators, uh, attorneys, what I saw, just not only from my own experience, but others, mm -hmm. we hear the nightmare stories. We oh, hear yes. Kramer versus Kramer, the movie, you know, the divorce story, um, you know, on Netflix, or, you know, but it is amazing of, and I don't sugarcoat it if you don't mind, mm, please. Um, because it's known there is so much trauma that happens to kids through divorce. That's one of the main ACEs. ACEs is adverse childhood experiences. Yes. And what people don't understand when we have unhealthy children, they become unhealthy adults. Yep. And unhealthy children, I don't care how much money you're going to throw in the state for education. If a child is traumatized, they're not going to learn. Correct. Um, they're going to get sick. And did you know most adults, if we don't heal our ACE, we have cancer. We have heart disease, everything you sure. could think of. So we think that just literally just ate us from yes. inside. So when I was going through this, watching what these family lawyers do, 
And David, this is why I want to do financial literacy and teach people because the way the law is right now, I call it the Esther law because my mom was going through something like that in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. How are we in 2024 in the same thing? I'm watching attorneys lie, get things signed off. Babies get taken away from mothers, vice versa, parental alienation. Um, I get very passionate about this, David. <laughs> so when I witnessed what these lawyers have done, literally taking, you got one family, your, your retirement plans, your college education, everything. You got to get now two divorce, two divorce attorneys mm -hmm. taken out of one pot. Oh, That's yes. double dipping. Okay. Then what do they do? They aid and condone in crimes. Let me explain. You are traumatizing children, right? Mm -hmm. Parental alienation is a crime. Mm -hmm. Now, most people think domestic violence is only physical. No, no, no. It is emotional, verbal, and financial. So you and I are married. Guess what? I'm going to financially abuse you. But guess what? These attorneys, they know how much money you have. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing that I get really upset about. And me and um, Judge Chris Kraft talked. And he agrees with me. We did a whole hour of, uh, you know, this online. And there are no fathers in juvenile court. They're all in jail for not paying child support or whatever. You have um, issues with, this is financial abuse, okay? They put a parenting plan together. How is a divorce attorney who has no idea about accounting or anything putting your parenting plan together? <laughs> okay. And by the time, but they do this on purpose and then you go to post divorce because half the stuff is messed up, right? Mm -hmm. totally. All the attorneys I've worked with, bankruptcy attorneys, everybody here, they know me. I have called and let me just tell you, I will say this because this is. This just gives you the truth, okay? We were in the middle of this chaotic mess. I went to one attorney and I said, listen, get everyone to thrive. You know, I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to hurt these kids. She said, Marie, if everybody did the right thing, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> Well, there's Woo! no question about the fact that uh, that yes. system needs a lot of reform. Yep. I, I've actually uh, uh, am one of two, uh, only two certified financial experts, if you would, in, in divorce. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I've never called to testify because <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't want to be confused with the facts. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but no, there, there are so many issues with that, and I'm so pleased to hear the work that you're doing with Esther's Law. But the one that. thing, if you don't mind, Please. what I want to tell everyone, this Esther Law is about, you know, as an attorney, like you have to have all your documents up front. You have sure. to have your discovery. Well, in divorce right now, it's the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. You could keep filing things. Nobody's bringing documents, whatever. The Esther law is going to require you within, you know, normally it should take 30 to 90 days, so to speak, but a time frame that you bring your documents, you get a two hours ACES class on your own adverse childhood experiences, so you hopefully don't create trauma on your children. But this law gets some pushback mm -hmm. last year, and I went to battle with all those legislators and everybody, <laughs> and there, two of them are attorneys mm -hmm. that are on this little child group. But I'm coming out fiercely to say, and I want to do financial literacy. I want to work with you. I want to work with a lot of people in this city. Put a forum together, and we are going to teach people how to empower themselves. And even why are why do we call it family law? Why do we call it family court? There's nothing about it may family. Maybe anti-family. Yeah, you know. You know? <laughs> wow. Well, I tell you what, I, I'm almost afraid to ask this question because you, you you have so many things going on. But but I do have to ask, with all these projects, all these initiatives, what is next for Marie Pisano? Well, I'm I'm really focused on um, seeing what we can do with these buildings, mm -hmm. um, working with investors and state legislators on some grants um, to get this going, but. It is really focusing on the MVP3 Foundation and mm -hmm. healing community through the arts, but also 
with the MVP3 network. I think it is an incredible opportunity um, to build integrity media. I am in media and I'm mad at media, not my friends. I know what they have to go through with news and everything, but I want to help these kids learn the right way to produce shows, but the content, um, thought provoking, but also with integrity. Things programming that is good for our society. Faith-based films, documentaries, just movies telling stories about, you know, whether it's my life or somebody's life, but it gives something for us because it is a programming mm -hmm. and what we think about, we bring about, and even with the music. So having the record label, Spurring, we got with the Brooks Museum, we started, we're starting the music series, Let's Come Together, and we got Billy Falcon and um, Mark Mulch coming out from Nashville, Nashville meets Memphis, so... That should be fun. Yeah. Well, I have a new t I have a new nickname for you. Okay. Because because uh, clearly <laughs> I'm I mean yeah I mean you you're a, you're a network executive you know you're a record producer I think you are the the, the mogul with the mission. Oh, I like that. So I think you are. <laughs> so, what advice would you have for young women who are interested in getting into this difficult world uh, of entertainment of filmmaking and how they can make their own mark? What would be the advice you would have for them? To it, it, not only is it, it's not so much strength, um, but it is owning your power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as women, and you know, we get, you know, there's a lot that women have to go through no mm -hmm. matter what. But um, I think there's a quote that I say all the time. There is no bravery in destroying anyone. Empowerment is rising to the occasion to be part of the solution. Indeed. And I think if women could be part of the solution, what I'm seeing in the entertainment industry right now, um, and our parents said that when we were younger, like, oh my goodness, it's chaos and, you know, <laughs> you know, all that. But what I'm seeing, women empowerment is not empowering. I want women to realize values, principles, morals, and you could find your yes but find it the right way. I love that. Yeah. So what does success look like for Marie Vizano? Family. Healing family. That's an amazing thing. Yeah. Last question. When you look back many, many years from now on, on your career, what would you hope would be your legacy? Giving back to a community, creating that change. And like through the films, you know, um, the law, um, you know, watching these women and men, what they go through is if we can put a little bit of, you know, whether it's the film or music that could create that change, mm -hmm. it's, it's making an impact on community. Well, you definitely are making an impact. And I hope so. This has been yeah. an incredible conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that what you, you do, you know, the, the impact you have in our community. Uh, I think the mission that you're on. And I think the things you're going to be able to do for, you know, for his future and, uh, and for uh, all these different things you're involved. So thank you yeah. very much for being a part well, thank you. Of, of Bull TV. And thank you too for believing. <laughs> well, absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you.